Good morning and a very warm welcome to St Mary's this morning as we meet on this Feast of All Saints. You will perhaps have seen last night's news that uh, we are to enter a further lockdown and what that means for churches is not entirely clear yet but the government has indicated that churches will be closed for corporate worship from next week. Um, we may yet be allowed to open for private prayer, um, but it does look like we won't be able to gather here next Sunday as we usually do. I will keep you all updated on that and uh, how we can keep in touch and continue to worship and pray together. I have asked you to fill in a contact form, uh, if you would. Uh, you should have been given this on the way in. If you haven't, do gather one. Um, and if you could leave that before you go, fill that in here and leave it before you go, that would be much appreciated. If there are others you know who are uh, isolated at home and you could pass one on, please do that as well. And if you're online, uh, the form should appear before the end of the service uh, on Facebook, uh, which you can download and fill in, or just email or message us with the information required. That should enable us to continue to support one another as a community, as the church, through whatever lies ahead in the next weeks, maybe months. But for this morning, this Feast of All Saints, we begin our worship with the introit hymn for all the saints, which will be sung for us, so please do be seated.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Today is the Feast of All Saints when we come before God knowing that we too are called to holiness. So let us open our hearts to the Spirit that he may make us pure and holy. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, looking to Jesus in penitence and faith. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image within us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us out of darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen stands to sing God's praises in the words of the glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Grant us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those inexpressible joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. The first reading is taken from the book of Revelation. After this I looked and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages standing before the throne and before the Lamb robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honour and power and might be to our Lord for ever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, who are these, robed in white? Where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. 
For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. The one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. And the sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the centre of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the springs of the water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual hymn which the choir will sing is Shall We Gather?
the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. Father, in the written word and through the spoken word, may you be, we behold your incarnate word, Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. When I introduced the choir hymn, uh, Shall We Gather? I thought the answer, in light of yesterday's announcements, is probably no. <laughs> Of course, uh, the hymn is referring not to physical gathering, but to spiritual gathering, being gathered together into Christ's body. It uses the image of the river, which comes from um, Ezekiel, Ezekiel the prophet, who had this great vision of the temple of God, that flowing from its altar was the river of life that gave life to all that it met, the trees, fish, the birds, who all drank or lived there, uh, flourished, uh, and there was life in abundance. And that image is taken through uh, John's Gospel particularly, and through the book of Revelation that we heard from this morning, to talk about being gathered together as those who, in Christ, in Jesus, have life, and have life abundantly. All Saints Day is a day when we often think of saints with a capital S, those who have given us an example of the Christian life, those for whom we look for inspiration, and those to whom we make our intercession that they might pray for us. We don't pray to saints, but we ask for their help, we ask for their prayer. You might have a favourite saint, uh, a named saint perhaps, somebody who is particularly special to you. Uh, Maximilian, there is a Saint Maximilian Kolbe who um, was imprisoned during the Second World War, but uh, he only spells his name with one L, so I never think I can take him as my uh, named saint. So I usually think of Luke, which is my second name, as uh, as my name saint, so uh, he was just a couple of weeks ago. You might have somebody who is special to you, whose story inspires you, or whose writings perhaps are a comfort or an inspiration. But that's a saint with a capital S. There's a particular way of deciding who gets to become a saint with a capital S. Uh, 
the Roman Catholic Church has a particular path that you must take, um, look for uh, a holy life, uh, miracles attested to the saints after their death, there's a long cause for canonization that takes many years, but new saints are being created that way all the time. There was one just recently, whose name escapes me, but who was canonized particularly for his role at evangelizing online. I love it, Tracy. Who, uh, yes, a saint. It, you usually have to be dead to be made a saint. So. We'll, we'll, we'll give you a, a little time here. I've got a while, yeah. Who was who canonised particularly for his role in uh, digital evangelism in being present uh, online. I think that was a move by the Catholic Church to say that is a very important part of our witness and ministry. The Church of England also has its own role of saints. We have our calendar of people that we remember through the year and many of those are not saints technically in that they haven't been through that process of canonization in the Roman Catholic Church because they're part of our heritage and our tradition. And again, new saints are being added to that list, uh, not all the time, but every 10 years or so there's a review and uh, the committee looks at who might be added to that list of people to remember throughout the year. I always remember taking a pilgrimage to Norwich back when those sorts of things were allowed. We went to visit two particular saints because a pilgrimage needs a destination, a purpose, um, a connection with our history. And those two saints were Julian of Norwich, whose shrine is in the city, and Edith Cavell, who is at the cathedral, and she's and buried at the cathedral there, and they built a little bit of a shrine to her as well. Both of those are saints in the sense that we honour them, revere them, they're in our calendar in the Church of England, but neither of them are saints in the fact that they've not been through that process of canonisation. Edith Cavell is an Anglican, she was uh, a nurse, again in the Second World War, who um, helped those who were trying to flee uh, Nazi-occupied Germany and Belgium. And so she is remembered for her work and her witness. Again, Julian of Norwich, who, whose writings are particularly important to the whole church, but she was never actually made a saint by the Roman Catholic Church, although she lived uh, in the 12th century and has been revered and honored ever since. And so it was uh, a particularly Anglican pilgrimage in that we were seeing these two people who were important to our tradition. About Julian of Norwich, uh, there was uh, a meeting of the Pope, Benedict, and uh, Archbishop Rowan. Uh, those two were in post at the time. And you may remember, Benedict visited uh, England and the UK, and he came to meet with the Archbishop of Canterbury. And uh, one of the things that they talked about was Julian of Norwich, and just how important she was to both traditions. And the question was asked of Benedict, well, shouldn't we make her a saint, if she's so important to the Roman Catholic tradition? And Pope Benedict said, the Church of England already have her in their calendar, they have a shrine to her, and they honour her and remember her. Isn't that enough? And I thought that was a very charitable move uh, in terms of ecumenical endeavour that the Pope said, well, perhaps the Church of England can make its own saints after all. Well, that's all very well, but that still leaves the saints being something of an exclusive club. When we talk about saints with a little s, we mean everyone. Everyone who is called to live the life of Christ. We all have it within our power to be saints, to be holy. That's all the word saint means, means holy, sanctified. 
those who have been filled with the Spirit. And that invitation is open to us all. It doesn't mean we're perfect, far from it, but it means that we know we can rely on the grace of God to lead us, guide us, heal us, and forgive us. It doesn't mean that bad things won't happen to us, but it does mean we have God to guide us through the dark times. And as we stand here, perhaps on the last act of physically corporate worship for a while again, we must remember that we are all saints. We are all called to be that fellowship of God, wherever we are, whether we're worshipping at home or in church. Whatever is happening, we are still called to be that body of Christ, those who witness to his love and his generous mercy. As the body of Christ, we have various roles and we're called to do various things. And so this All Saints Day feels a particularly auspicious day on which to commission our two church wardens for the forthcoming <coughs> term, which is uh, about six months we're expecting, although who knows what will happen next spring. Church wardens elected were Colin Brown and Richard Hart, so if I could invite you to join me here at the altar and we will swear you in, as it, it says. This usually happens by the Archdeacon at a special visitation um, to which uh, everybody from the deanery might be invited, but in the current circumstances I have the privilege of doing this on behalf of the bishop. of church wardens from the canons of the Church of England. The church wardens, when admitted, are officers of the bishop. They shall discharge such duties as are by law and custom assigned to them. They shall be foremost in representing the laity and in cooperating with the incumbent. They shall use their best endeavours by example and precept to encourage the parishioners in the practice of true religion and to promote unity and peace among them. They shall also maintain order and decency in the church and churchyard, especially during the time of divine service. Colin and Richard, you have been elected as church wardens by the parishioners of this parish. Will you declare your commitment to carrying out this duty? I, Colin Brown, I, Richard Hart, to do solemnly, solemnly and sincerely declare that I will faithfully and willingly discharge the duties of the office of church warden within the parish to which, which I have been elected during the period of my appointment. I further declare that I am not disqualified from holding the office of church warden under section 2 of the church warden's measures 2001. Thank you. Let us pray for Richard and Colin as church wardens of this parish. Eternal God, who calls us in your service and grants us the grace and strength to fulfil that calling, mercifully look upon those whom you have called to the responsibility of church warden, that beginning their work in reverence, continuing it in obedience, and completing it with devotion, they may be renewed and empowered by your Holy Spirit, and live in constant thankfulness to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Colin and Richard, may the Lord give you wisdom, courage, strength and love to do his will. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and on your work done in his name, now and always. Amen. Amen. Let us now all stand and declare our faith together in the words of the creed. 
We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. that the Church, strengthened by the witness of the saints through all ages, may bear faithful witness to the message of the Gospel. We pray for the Church in Suffolk, for our bishops, priests, licensed and lay workers, as they strive to do your work. May all Christian people call to be saints in their own time, be worthy of those who have gone before and kept the faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for those who are represented in government, both here and throughout the world, still struggling in the ongoing pandemic. May they be men and women of integrity, guided by a desire for public service and a love of peace and truth. We ask that they also be just and compassionate, and strive to seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear Make our lives more worthy of the blessings promised to those who follow the way of the Lord. We ask today for your guidance and love for Richard and Colin as our church warden, and give thanks for all their work in this place. May we be all loving and peaceable in our relationships, and may our families and friends be led into holiness, and our whole community blessed in these challenging times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for all who are suffering in body, mind, or spirit. Have mercy on those who are persecuted for their faith on all who are slandered or falsely accused, and on refugees and migrants forced to take drastic courses of action. Give them strength and change the hearts of those who oppress them. Relieve those who do not have enough to eat and drink, and satisfy those who hunger for the good food of righteousness. Lord, in your mercy. give thanks for the departed who have run their course and who are numbered with the saints in everlasting glory. We remember those who have recently died in this parish, especially Margaret Alexander and Linda Wood, as well as those who will be named in the special service this afternoon. May we so live our lives that we too will be received into their fellowship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, we thank you for the example of all the saints. And as we go from our worship into the world, help us to follow in their footsteps with courage and hope, determined like them to do your work and live the gospel of your Son. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the, for the sake, sake of your Son, and our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Pray too for Barbara Gibbs, who's currently in hospital with gallstones. Keep her in your prayers. Now would you stand for the sharing of God's peace. We are fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, through Christ our Lord who came and preached peace to those who were far off and those who were near. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
offertory hymn, In Our Days of Thanksgiving. As we come before you in this, your holy feast, make us worthy to be called your saints, that we may come to stand with you before your throne forever. In Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is, right. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And now we give you thanks, most gracious God, surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, and glorified in the assembly of your saints. The glorious company of apostles praise you, the noble fellowship of prophets praise you, the white-robed army of martyrs praise you. We, your holy church, acclaim you, in communion with angels and archangels, and with all who serve you on earth and worship you now in heaven. We raise our voice to proclaim your glory, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In 
the same way, after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Uniting our prayers with those of all the saints, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. of Christ keep you all in eternal life. Amen.
Let us pray. God, the source of all holiness and giver of all good things, may we who have shared at this table as strangers and pilgrims here on earth be welcomed with all your saints to the heavenly feast on the day of your kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We who the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. You will be relieved to know that I don't have too much to say today. Um, just a reminder that this afternoon at 2.30 we have our All Souls service. There will be several people here who don't often come to church, so we need to make them feel welcome while still being socially distanced, so that's quite important. And also, on Wednesday, if it's to be our last time together for some time, we will have our 9.30 Eucharist, and it would be great to see as many of you here as possible if it's the last time for a month. And with that, until we meet here again on a Sunday, God bless. Thank you, Colin. Yes, yeah, so uh, under the current guidelines, it looks like we will be here on Wednesday, but services, um, including Friday and next Sunday, will be moved online. I do hope to be in touch with you all to, to let you know what we can do through the lockdown period, and I do very much expect to be here to support you all um, and to continue to gather you in prayer and worship. So please do return your contact details to me uh, if you can. And that goes for, for others who are not here today uh, as well. I don't want uh, anybody to be uh, left out or to feel that they can't be in touch with me if needed. That said, um, we are still living in Newmarket and we might move to Haverhill at some point soon. Um, I'll have to update you on my new contact details when that's the case, but my email and mobile phone number will stay the same. On the back of your handout today, there is also some further information about the parish giving scheme which we announced last week, so if that is something you feel you could sign up to, um, do have a look at that information. There, is, uh, uh, there are more forms available uh, at the back of church as you leave. That's uh, a new way of giving by direct debit, which helps you and us to plan efficiently and commit to giving in thankfulness from what we have been given. We will very much need your support in prayer and in monetary donations through the lockdown as we continue to support each other as the church gathered. Thank you to everyone for all that you do uh, and I know that the lockdown will mean much of that stops um, much of the, the ways in which you show your uh, offering to God, show your commitment to God, the little jobs that happen around church won't happen through the lockdown so um, I do hope that you continue to find ways to praise God in your acts as well as in your words Our final hymn, which the choir will sing for us, Ye Watchers and Ye Holy Ones. <laughs>
stands to receive God's blessing. The Lord be with you. God, who has prepared for us a city with eternal foundations, give you grace to share the inheritance of the saints in glory and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.